So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how to make it so one group will take the uh, data from another input that we're putting. So like, how do we send data to a group? So like say I push a button, I have a thing, I want to send that thing to the group to then do stuff in the group. Maybe I'm changing settings, maybe I'm altering the data of that thing after I do a query. So uh, first let's make a thing. So let's do thing for this video and then Great. Create a new type of thing. Let's give it some attributes. Let's just do color. Oops. Yeah, color will be a text. And then we'll do number. Sorry, it's early. We'll just do number as a number field. So now we have a thing for this video. Perfect. So now that I have thing for this video, I want to basically have the ability to create thing and then edit thing, create thing, search for thing, edit thing. Okay, so this is a group I'm just going to make out here. And in this group, I'm going to have an input. And then I'm going to have, actually, to make it simpler, let's just do two drop downs. Two drop downs, very simple. One, two, three, four, five, six. Static choices. Blue, red, yellow. There. Great. So, drop down color. Always name these. You don't want to get three weeks into building an app and then end up having to figure out what you called some box on another page that is hidden and hasn't been viewed by you in two weeks because you built it on day one and now you need to uh, reference it three weeks in. So make sure you name things things that are easy to remember uh, the way you would kind of describe. I, I like to name things how I would describe them. So like button A, button create the thing for the video. And then um. We're going to create a thing in here, but we're also going to just do a quick repeating group on the side here. Nope, you need to fit inside the box. There we go. Fit inside the group. Type of content thing for this video. Data search. Do a search for thing in this video. Done. Perfect. We're not doing any constraints. Awesome. And then I just want color. Actually, let's just make this even easier. Let's do current things color. And then let's do current things number. Great. So it doesn't necessarily matter what they are. And then we're just going to put a button in this group. There we go. Edit. create thing, we're going to edit it. So let's create an action here. Why is it not working? Here to add an action. All right, so I don't know why that happened. I just had to exit out and come back. But um, button create thing for video is clicked. Add in things, create a new thing. We're going to create a thing for this video. I'm just going to click on add all fields. Um, let's drop down colors value and drop down numbers value. Perfect. Easy enough. Oh, right. Reset relevant inputs. I don't have to do it 100 times. And then I'll show you what we have now. Okay, so blue, two, red, five, yellow, six, blue, 
one. Great. So I have stuff I can edit. Perfect. Let's go back here. Now, let's create the group that I'm going to edit them in. So I obviously don't want this showing all the time, but we'll go over the show hide for this group here in a minute. Um, it's essentially, what I would do in an app is click, is hide this and have it just send to here. But this is going to be a type of content, a thing for this video. And the text is going to be the parent groups themes this video's color. The parent groups themes this video's number. Great. And then we'll just change the style to heading six. It's a little bit bolder for fun. Perfect. Then a few different things we can do. We could just make it so we have inputs here that are already pre-filled with that data, right? So you could do drop-downs in here again and have it be defaulted to the answer for what these are, um, which would make the most sense on this app. So I'm just going to copy the number one and drag it into here and then have the default value be parent groups things number. Okay, so this is the drop-down new number change box. Alright, so that's going to be whatever number's in here is going to be what we want the new number to be. But its default value is going to end up being whatever we send to this group. So um, what we're setting up right now is that this group is a thing for this video, right? So whatever thing you have, it's this thing is what the data in this group is going to reference. And then we want, we're going to make it so this button sends this thing to this group. And then we're going to make it editable. So initial content will be color, right? So I need to make this button do something. So button element actions display group display data be group thing for this video correct yeah I didn't name this group I should have named this group create thing for this video which makes more sense so now I can just delineate between the two better see how it's easier create and thing for this video uh, data to display current cells thing so essentially what we are saying is we want, when you push this button, we want this group to show this thing, okay? Let's do a preview and show you what that looks like. So right now, nothing's in the group. Why? We haven't sent it any data. Now, I click edit, blue two, blue two. Red five, red five. Yellow six, yellow six. Blue one, blue one. Let's go back to blue two, changes again. Now, I wanna edit that data, so able to Save changes. Make changes to a thing. Parent groups thing for this video. It's referencing the group that it's sitting in, which is the thing that we sent there. All fields. We'll just go grab the. This is what color. We did not, uh, we didn't name input A, which was bad. We should have named input A, but input A is going to be the only input we have, so we know that's the right one. And then drop down new number. Great. Now, edit blue. And here we made a text box, so I can change it to purple. Changes, and you'll see it changed up here, it changed here, because bubble changes data in real time. So, very easy things to do uh, in terms of sending data to a group. Um, if I was using this in my app, I would actually have this group be uh, invisible on page load. And what I would do is I would have this button also do the element actions show this group when I clicked it. And I'll show you how that changes the whole flow of things. So more data in here. Great. But I want to edit purple two. Click purple two. Boom. There we go. 
now it shows. I could put an X here to close out of it or whatever I wanted to do. I could also make it so this hides, so I could so go edit and it would show hide. It would show this group and hide this group. But more on the show in, in hiding in another video. This video is about creating a thing, sending data to an area, and being able to edit that thing. Alright, if this was helpful, please give it a uh, give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe. I'm trying to see if we can maybe get to a thousand by the end of the year. That'd be pretty cool. Alright, have a great day.